Hi, my name is Abhishan Kare, and I'm here today to talk to you about my idea for a small-scale application of hydrogen. It's called hydrogen fuel cell cogeneration. Wow, that's a mouthful. Let's start from the beginning, hydrogen. Hydrogen is everywhere, burning inside massive stars to being a building block in the water you drink. Recently, it's gained traction in the news as a potential fuel of the future that could replace current fuels that have harmful emissions. It's seen potential as a fuel for hydrogen-powered cars as well as the scale of hydrogen power plants. One area of potential is the use of hydrogen in buildings and homes. The purpose of this scholarship is to find such a use. In one cold Sunday morning, I was racking my brain for an idea when I went to turn the heater on. Eureka, I had an idea. What if hydrogen could be used to heat homes? Right now, furnaces run on natural gas, petroleum gas, wood, or coal, all of which produce greenhouse gases. They also use a tremendous amount of electricity, and the electricity is often generated with power plants that create more greenhouse gases. Using hydrogen could significantly cut down greenhouse gas emissions. However, creating hydrogen takes some energy, and simply combusting it to produce heat is not efficient. So there needs to be some other way to use hydrogen in a furnace. That's where the idea of cogeneration comes in. Cogeneration is the concept of generating electricity as well as usable heat at the same time. A hydrogen cogeneration system then could be useful because it would also sort of repay some of the electricity used to make the hydrogen as well as create heat to be used in the furnace. The hydrogen cogeneration system in this case is a fuel cell. Fuel cell are devices that generate electricity using chemical reactions that are typically renewable and environmentally friendly. There are many kinds of fuel cells, but the one we're interested in is the proton exchange membrane fuel cell, or PEMFC for short. The PEMFC generates electricity using a chemical reaction between hydrogen and oxygen. The products of this reaction are water and heat, so there would be no greenhouse gas emissions. The heat would be used for the furnace, cutting down emissions from the furnace. The electricity would be used in other applications in the house, or sold back to the grid. And water is also produced, which cuts down emissions from water production plants. There are several layers to this idea. One advantage of using hydrogen is that it can be piped. Since the PEMFC doesn't use tons of hydrogen, it isn't necessary to have hydrogen production on site, which often increases the cost of such systems. The first layer is having a central production of hydrogen on a solar or wind farm, and using the hydrogen produce and piping that to homes. Then, the second layer is inside the house. The fuel cell intakes hydrogen and oxygen and produces electricity. The fuel cell can be hooked up to the house's electrical system, where the electricity produced would be used for other applications. The heated water then would pass from the fuel cell to the heat exchanger of the furnace. The heat exchanger is a series of pipes that stay warm for a long time. They're the key component of the furnace. The pipes would extract heat from the water, and then the water could be stored elsewhere. The heat in the pipes would be used to heat the homes. The last layer is the fuel cell itself. Most of the nitty gritty details are in my essay, so here's the overview. The fuel cell intakes hydrogen, which is ionized using a catalyst, which is currently platinum. There's a membrane separating the anode and cathode, which allows the hydrogen ions to pass, but not electrons. On the other side, oxygen is taken in. This is the chemical reaction between hydrogen and oxygen. As you can see, we need free electrons to complete this reaction. Thus, the electrons are forced through the circuit onto this side to complete the reaction between the hydrogen ions, oxygen, and the electrons to produce water. Thus, water and heat is produced. The fuel cell would need to be cheap to be implemented widely. One way to reduce costs is to 3D print the fuel cells. Acrylonitrile butadiene styrene, or ABS plastic, is used in 3D printing, and it can resist the temperatures involved in fuel cells. Fuel cells typically operate at 60 degrees Celsius, and ABS plastic can withstand temperatures up to 80 degrees Celsius. Another way to reduce prices is to use a different catalyst other than platinum, which is expensive and can degrade. Platinum rubidium alloys have shown promise. They have shown to be more efficient and more resistant, and they will likely be implemented as catalysts in future fuel cells. Taking these steps will make the PEMFC more feasible to be used in houses and buildings and on a larger scale. Now, the big question is, is there evidence for this cogeneration idea? Indeed there is. A Danish paper submitted at the International Gas Union Research Conference in 2008 ran tests on various fuel cell cogeneration systems to test their efficiency. They found that without using the heat produced, the efficiency of the cells was about 45%. However, capturing the heat and using it to produce electricity made the efficiency 80%, nearly twice as much higher. The system would significantly reduce greenhouse gas emissions and is one cobblestone on the path to a renewable future. Is it as glamorous as a Tesla or solar-powered plane? Perhaps not. But the biggest changes come from changing the littlest things, and I hope to see a big change in the future of our planet. Thank you. I'm Ambishan Kare. Created using Powtoon.